Citizens, it's that time you are officially in Alert Zone. Welcome to The Alert Zone TV. I am the wizard, Uncle James. I hope everybody um, is doing well. Uh, if this is your first time to The Alert Zone, I would love for you to be a frequent participant, a frequent citizen of The Alert Zone. It is a worldwide movement. Um, you can do that by hitting the subscribe button, hitting the bell so you can be notified when we drop fire content, giving a video a like, comment, sharing, definitely, definitely. If you believe what you hear here, if you're 18 years of age or older and you are able to be legally armed in America, practice your Second Amendment rights, it is not illegal under the Constitution. We're going to have a talk. Um about something and it's gonna be uncomfortable for some people maybe you know and, and I understand it um, excuse me you come to gun to Second Amendment media sometimes you want to hear what you want to hear and it may not always be the truth it may not be a fact or opinion you agree with When I started High High Alert TV, and then that channel was shut down, um, and I had to come to here, I made it clear where this channel was going to go. And I know because I don't just constantly do gun reviews and what have you, this may not be the more popular channel. And I understand that. You know, um, I have people that frequent this channel, and we have a lot of good dialogue. You know, even if they don't agree with me, and I don't agree with them, that's fine. I'm okay with that. I'm not thin-skinned. I told you guys in the Second Amendment media, Second Amendment, YouTube movement, gun tube, whatever you want to call it, I was going to go ahead and be the person to step up and have the uncomfortable conversations about firearms and how race, politics, and everything is connected to firearms, whether we like it or not. And I understand people to come and don't want to hear that but it would be disingenuous especially because as I explained to everybody the culture shock I went through when I moved to Iowa from New Orleans and just the different things I experienced over my lifetime that second amendment related and a lot of people don't think so we're going to have a conversation about something that's very uncomfortable but it needs to be had. It's a conversation for everybody. Because as I get in the comment section a lot of times, shout out to Rose Ivory, I haven't forgot you. I am very, 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 very much apologize. I have not forgot. I just haven't had time to do thorough research on that incident you asked me about out there in uh, New York. So I'm gonna address that. Just shout out to you. I don't want just I don't want you to think I'm ignoring you. I got a lot going on. Another thing before I start this conversation is a lot of people I don't think you guys understand offline some of the questions I get asked, some of the ridicule I deal with, and some of the things I get accused of. But I continue to do this program because a lot of people have been conditioned it can't happen to me. It can't happen to me. And then it happens. This is a guide, so if it ever happens to you, you know how to deal with it. That's what the alert zone is for. It ain't just, this channel ain't just about shooting firearms, you know, and buying guns. I love doing both. And as the channel progresses, you guys are gonna see me doing more and more purchases and more and more gun uh, range time. Uh, I've made up my mind. I think I'm gonna start going back to the range a little bit more, especially now that it's been warmed up. Um, the Timmins Grove out there in Elbion, Iowa. I get accosted too much out there by people, and I know it's only a matter of time before an incident happens. I've already made the necessary notifications offline to different people about that particular place. 
I put these videos online and mention that because if something ever happens and I have to defend myself, I got some kind of digital footprint, but I have a paper trail also of some of these incidents of being accosted out there. Um, it's a public hunting land. It's not illegal to go out there and fire your weapon. And I can tell you, you know, like I told you guys the other day, you know, it's, it, it, they come up to me a lot. So, the murder of Jordan Neely, and make no mistake before anybody starts screaming, the coroner ruled it a homicide. Not me, I'm not an ME. Has brought up something in my mind, and it's brought up a topic or a subject that we in the alert zone need to have, and I'm going to do this publicly because. I'm going to be the one to say this, and whatever flack comes with it, I'm okay with that. This is a small channel, you know. Um, maybe one day it'll grow, but, you know, so. The murder of Jordan Neely sparked the conversation, but it also reminded me of something in the back of my head, and we're going to have a discussion about that, and what that is is, for whatever you think about how this went, whether you think Daniel Penny was in the right or the wrong, it brought something to my mind and it made me think about something that I constantly think of, especially living in Iowa, and that despite what they may tell you uh, here on these public platforms, Behind closed doors, a lot of gun tubers, a lot of us, especially us, always have in the back of our mind about self-defense. There's a double standard for us. Because in the case of self-defense, we always have to keep in the back of our minds prison. What do you mean by that, huh? heard a report of the people that was there, Daniel Penny snuck up on Jordan Neely. Period, point blank. That is a fact. Everybody is in agreement with, yeah, the guy was on the train shouting that he was hungry and he was thirsty and what have you. At the end of the day, he snuck up on him from behind. And he only got charged with second degree manslaughter. You guys already know the only reason he was charged was because of the outrage. But I was looking at how this case has divided America again amongst racial lines because people understand what's going on here. He snuck up on this guy, and I've already told y'all about these little ambush killings out here. But he snuck up behind this guy, and even after he choked him out, they kept telling him, hey man, you're gonna kill him, you're gonna kill him. And he didn't stop because he all, that was his goal from the get-go, was to kill him. And he had them guys holding the man down and what have you, and I don't wanna go off into a tirade about that. But it brought up something else. When I talked about that double standard, there was something else that happened in New York. The case of John White. For all the NRA people who love to talk about the NRA, the case of John White. We're going to talk about that. Sorry about that. For those of you who don't know, in 2006, a teenager by the name of Daniel... Sicario, I know I'm I'm murdering that last name, but he's an Italian, Italian American. Seventeen was shot and killed. Now he was Italian, and the man who shot him and killed him was a black man. But let me give you guys the backstory, and you can go read the write up, because I've already seen some of these articles of how they slighted this. But this guy, this Daniel fella. And his friends was at a party with Mr. White's son. Uh, some girl accused him. Some girl he didn't. I don't know if he even knew her. And they 
accused him of touching her or making an inappropriate comment or what have you. And they jumped on this guy. They beat him. He managed to break free of the guys, get in his car. They followed him home to his home. These teenagers followed this man home, followed this other teen home. And then when he went in and let his dad know what happened, he was kind of bruised up. He could hear these guys at the end of his drive driveway screaming. And he came out to see what the commotion was. And he took his fire on with him, which he's supposed to. And most of you understand these castle and stand your ground doctrines. Your home is the one place you don't run from. If you run from home, you can't go nowhere else. These guys stood at the end of this driveway and they were screaming, send him out, send him out. Let me explain something to you about this send him out. Remember the story of Emmett Till? When they showed up, we want that boy. Where is he at? Send him out. When you're being told as a black person to send your kid out and you got a mob and it was three or four of them out there and they followed this kid home, send him out means we're going to deal with him and it usually means we're going to take their life. This man stood and asked him to leave his house, which he had no duty to retreat because he was on his own property. And the Daniel Sariki or however you pronounce his name, that kid dared to, that man to shoot him and he approached that man and went for that man's gun and he lost his life. John White got convicted and sent to prison. Um, Governor David Patterson on the way out commuted his sentence, but they didn't exonerate him, but he commuted his sentence. This happened in New York in 2005, 2006. Where was the NRA to defend him and say, hey man, this guy is defending his property. He's defending the life of his son. His son retreated. I want you guys to understand this. His son left a problem and a problem followed him. You know who else did that? Remember Trayvon Martin? Florida is a stand your ground state and that kid ran. And Zimmerman ran him down. Zimmerman got out of that. I'm going somewhere with this. I got one other guy because I can't remember how to pronounce his name. Bear with me one second. Um, okay. Uh, this guy, Corey, Corey Pujols, was a Dunkin' Donuts employee. This is a picture of him. You guys can Google that and read that. Um, the story went, this guy, who you see him next to, the black guy is a Dunkin' Donuts employee. The other guy... There's a guy he got into an argument with. The guy he got into an argument with, number one, since they love to bring out records, is a registered sex offender who was raping children. He, he, got, he did prison time for that. But an argument started in Dunkin' Donuts' driveway because he didn't like his order. He went and parked his car, and instead of calling the police or what have you, he came in the store. Pujols was the manager and tried to de-escalate the situation multiple times. All the reports state that. <laughs> this guy went on a racial tirade and what have you, and threatening people, and he did, and he escalated and escalated even after the police was called, and the manager, Corey Pujols, just kept asking him to just leave, just leave the store. Well, this guy defended himself and wound up having to take a plea deal for assault. For a guy who brought a problem to him and came and threatened him. All these people like Governor Ron DeSantis. DeSantis was the governor when this happened. He's caught in, calling Daniel Penny a hero and a good Samaritan. How come he didn't do that about this case? 
all these people who talking about take America back and the Good Samaritan, how come they didn't say nothing about that? And that made national news. I remember hearing about that in Iowa. How come they, where, where was all the uh, hero welcoming all that for him? See, there's a conversation we need to have here on Gun Tube. We all talk about self-defense and we always use, well, not always, but all of us at least once have shown or alluded to the scary black guy. And you know what that's promoted? That any violence, any self-defense from us is not self-defense at all. I told you guys, there's a lot of people that like the Second Amendment, but they want conditions to it. And the racial condition is the number one condition that they want. Whether you like it or not, the NRA. Where's all these people who like to talk about Americans defending themselves? This guy defended himself. Now, all he did was the guy come back there to accost him and they get into a fight and he decked the guy and the guy died a couple of days later. He didn't kick him while he was on the ground and continue to pound him or whatever. And they was going to charge him what they charged him with manslaughter and he was in a stand your ground state where he didn't leave the store to go start a fight that guy came in there and started a fight with him you understand what i'm saying this whole notion that we're not allowed to protect ourselves these quote unquote karen and kin videos you see where you see these karens and kins and what have you accosting black people and you see us running or you see us hesitating in the back of our mind we all know this whether we admit it or not publicly we all know if I kill this motherfucker and defend myself forget the lawsuit there's a 90% chance especially if this person is white I'm gonna go to prison for defending my life do you know how many guys and girls are dead because they refuse to defend their life because they was afraid of possibly going to prison for defending themselves? Let me tell you something. Here in the alert zone, I'm not a preacher. I'm not a religious dude. I don't get into all that. When I say righteous, I mean righteous in the context of we law-abiding citizens and we not out here advocating violence. We don't advocate that because you're armed, you go start something with somebody. You've never, ever, ever heard me advocate for violence. You've never heard me say, yeah, get armed and go somewhere where you know they're going to pick a fight with you so you can look for a reason to shoot somebody. We don't do that. 95 plus percent of legal gun owners don't go out looking for trouble. We don't do that. We don't advocate that. But there is a reality that a lot of people may know and may not know. In the back of our mind, we are always faced with the decision of, is this a sanctioned target? Under the law, I'm allowed to protect myself. The written law, under the unwritten law, I'm not. I'm from Louisiana. I'm from where they would just tell us straight to our face. We don't have no rights to defend ourselves from a non-black person under no circumstance. <laughs> Latasha Harlins got shot in the back of the fucking head by that Asian lady. They had to convict her because it was on camera. She got that 10 years suspended, so she didn't do no time in prison behind it. For those of you who've never heard that story, go look it up. Latasha Harlins. That happened around that whole Rodney King thing. See, that's a part of the L.A. riots a lot of people don't know and they don't talk about. You had Peter Lyang up there in New York. Right there in New York. Shooting the empty hallway and kill a Kai Gurley. 
and the Asians went on a campaign that it was a mistake. And basically, he got his sentence, his sentence suspended. And yeah, he, I know it was a black DA, but they paid Ken Thompson almost $500,000 to advise the judge, oh, don't give him no time. To advise the jury, don't give him no time. If you notice, we, when people defend themselves from us, here in gun two, we say fine. This guy was out. You, you, you a white guy? You a Asian guy? You a Hispanic guy? You a whatever? You out minding your fucking business, and Pookie and Ray Ray run up on you. You supposed to deal with them. But what about when Chad and Jose run up on us? What about when Hunter and them? What about when Daniel and them show up? After our kids have fled and went home and they show up like a fucking mob. Do we not have the right to defend ourselves too? This George Neely case is 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 brought up a whole lot of conversations that need to be had. Whether you think Jordan Neely was right for screaming on the train or not, I know now they keep trying to say all oh, the day before he was trying to push somebody off. This I don't know, but we know what happened this day because it was on video, and the video came out what happened right before he started getting choked. He's just on this. If you've never been to New York, yeah. You in for a shock when you actually go to hell. You ain't got to be on the subway to watch somebody screaming and having an episode. You can see that out open in the middle of the fucking street. This thing about self-defense has to be across the board. Period, point blank. I know it's an uncomfortable conversation. But do we not reserve the right to protect ourselves too? I told you about the case of that that man that got dismembered out there in Mississippi. I knew what was in the back of his mind. If I get a gun and I have to defend myself, I'm going to wind up going to prison for this. Even if I fled from the mob, I'm going to still wind up going to prison because under no circumstances do I have the right to defend myself. That is an unwritten rule that we get prosecuted for in real court, not the court of public opinion. There's people sitting in prison right now, us, that all they did was defend themselves, but it wasn't sanctioned. I tell you guys and girls these types of things because I want everybody to understand I'm the, I don't make up what I bring up what I talk about people think it can't happen to them and then it shows up I told you guys I live in a town where we don't even exist and yet there's armed people walking around in the grocery stores now and I'm gonna keep going back to that until everybody get get it through their head Don't think it can't happen to you. Those people in Allen, Texas thought that never could happen to them. The people who got robbed in Beverly Hills, that one actor got robbed out of that half a million dollar watch he had on, sitting out there having lunch. There's a lot of people in this country who thought this could never happen to them. That don't happen here. Being on high alert, Practicing your Second Amendment rights mean you are aware of your surroundings. And you understand it can come at any time from anywhere. This shit can knock up on one hour doorsteps at any given time. I tell you guys, I like to go out in the woods and go scouting and go do a hunting and what have you. 
I'm always taking a chance on my freedom, on my life or both when I go out there. That's always in the back of my head. I told you guys I've been accosted by the DNR at a fishing pond where I had to show my ID and show my fishing license and that I had a trout stamp. And even in the woods hunting. I've had the DNR guy tell me, hey, you got a license to be out here? I don't talk about what I talk about because I'm trying to create a racial divide. I talk about what I talk about because we live in a time now where kids from all different communities have camaraderies with each other. And I want to shout out the two guys that was out there last week when I was shooting my home defense video and my 38 Super uh, that defended me. Because there was two cars that pulled up to come and say something to me and that guy had his AR with him and he let them know it wasn't going to happen. If you watch those two videos, you can hear the shooting in the background while I'm talking. They seen what I went through. And I'm out there minding my business. I was going to be put in a situation that if I was out there alone and I had to defend myself, now I got to worry about if I'm going to go to prison for this. And then you know what I was going to hear? Well, what was you out there for anyway? You just couldn't stay home? Why you had to shoot him? That's what I would have had to hear. Now, hey, I've been the one got shot out there because I'm hesitating to defend myself from somebody pulling up on me to start something with me. And from the way this driveway is constructed, you know already. They would have said, well, I pulled up out here and he pointed a gun at me, so I took him out. And that just would have been the end of the story. Practice your Second Amendment rights. It's not illegal under the Constitution. But if you are a member of the Alert Zone, or you love the Second Amendment as much as a lot of y'all claim that y'all love the Second Amendment, when we defend ourselves, we deserve for y'all to speak up for us too because we damn sure speak up for y'all. We speak up for everybody else when they're harmed. But when we harmed, everybody dogpile on us because it's been ingrained in the society that under no circumstances do we have the right to defend ourselves. Shout out to Yoki, Yoki Yang, for bringing up the whole Rosewood thing and going down there and talking about that massacre. Historically, we've been terrorized and we've always, always, always had to deal with the fact of if we defended ourselves, we was going to probably go to prison. I'm going to say this and then I'm going to get off of here. You guys don't know how many people, how many of y'all live in the Midwest, out west, and up north, black folks. Your family got roots up there. Your family got roots from the south. And your granddaddy or your uncles or your somebody in your family, generations older than you, the family had to flee because they was being accosted and they had to defend themselves. And they had to leave their land and everything and flee because the mob was going to kill them. Sit down and talk to some of y'all family members. You live in Detroit, Chicago, uh, New York, L.A., Nebraska, uh, Missouri, Kentucky, Ohio, wherever. Talk to your elders in the family. Some of them going to tell y'all the truth. Yeah. Granddad or great granddad, yeah. Oh man, these guys was doing this, 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 and that. He wound up having to defend himself, or he wound up having to do this or do that. And when he came home, we had to run. We that we couldn't pick up. We had to run and come and get reestablished somewhere else. 
hit me in the comment section and let me know what you think. Do you think I'm reaching? Do you think I'm being uh, shit starting or gaslighting or whatever they call it? This Jordan Neely case just points to that. How, and you've already heard the chatter. If this had been the opposite way, he would have been arrested right then and there. He wouldn't have been allowed to even get off that fucking train. He probably would be dead in New York City. NYPD don't never miss out on a chance to take one of us out. I didn't even say that. That's what the chatter even in the mainstream media is. If this was the shoe on the other foot, he would have never been allowed to leave. If Jordan Neely had been the Marine and Daniel Penny had been the guy on the train screaming and hollering as they say being aggressive. These some these Americans talking about Daniel Penny was a good Samaritan would have never put up almost two million dollars for Jordan Neely's defense. All the Trump words would have came out. Eric Adams and Kathy Hochul would have never defended that. So for all y'all who like to talk that woke crap about wokeness and all that crap, hell, it was the damn Democratic governor of New York, Kathy Hogan, and the Democratic mayor of New York, Eric Adams, that was condemning Jordan Neely, saying he got what he deserved, basically. I think I touched on something that's very important. And I touched on the conversation that needs to be had. For those of you who don't know, now you know. This is something that we're always faced with. The double-edged sword. Do I not defend myself and lose my life? Or do I defend myself and possibly wind up in prison? And I just gave you two situations. I've already talked to you about the Mofa report out there in California. How everybody was for self-defense until we showed up. I do these things to educate people because I understand from living in a different region of the country, the education system is different. They talk. They, there's a lot of things they don't talk about. Probably because they don't know and probably because they don't want people to know. But there's a lot of things that I talk to people about offline and they tell me, damn, I never knew that. Oh, I guess I never thought about it like that. There's people that tell me, oh, I never thought about having a legally owned firearm with me and having to stick my hands out the window so the police don't shoot me. Or keeping my hands on the steering wheel. Or walking down the street and being stopped with a firearm and in the back of my mind, I'm hoping if the law enforcement stop me, they don't blow my brains out. That's a reality for us. Uncle James is just the one who will come out and say publicly what we all know in private. Till next time, everybody out there, stay safe, stay on, stay on high, high alert. We out.